Brandon Parker, and this is my partner in crime, Tony Piano. And our experiment was number seven, the determination of the concentration of a weak acid. Uh, the objective is to standardize the solution of NaOH and use it to determine the concentration of weak acid using titration. Um, for our procedure, uh, step one involved preparing 250 milliliters of a 0.1 molar NaOH solution. Um, our second step was to thoroughly rinse a 25 milliliter burette with 10 milliliter portions of DI water. Um, following that, um, in 5 milliliter increments, uh, we were then supposed to rinse our um, same burette with the 0.1 molar solution of our NaOH concentration. You can just keep it and scroll through. Uh, the standardization of NaOH solution, uh, the first step is to weigh four samples between 0.3 and 0.4 grams of KHP. Uh, then you take each one of those samples and put it into a separate Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, the second step was add 100 milliliters of DI water to each flask and then stir it until it's completely dissolved. Then you add two drops of the phenolphthalein. Uh, the third step is to fill the burette with one molar, 0.1 molar NaOH solution, and then record the initial beer reading. Uh, the fourth step was slowly add the NaOH solution to one of your flasks of KH, KHP solution, and then with a gentle swirling. Um, following that step, um, when the NaOH solution uh, comes into contact as it drips in, uh, it of course turns pink, and as you're stirring, um, once there is the proper amount of NaOH, the entire solution will turn pink. Um, when it turns pink, you then record uh, how many milliliters of the NaOH solution you put in. Uh, and then following that, you want to repeat those exact steps for the other three flasks. Uh, determination of the concentration of unknown acid. Uh, you add 10 milliliters of an unknown to four flasks. Uh, 90 milliliters of DI water to each of the four flasks and stir for a total of 100 milliliters. Uh, same thing, add two drops of the uh, finger family. Then titrate each sample with NaOH solutions to the faintest shade of pink. For our first table, uh, these were our four our notes. Um, as far as standardizing the sodium solution, uh, we measured out, of course, four different masses of KHB, uh, as they are above. Uh, as you titrate, of course, we started out from left to right and um, first took 17 and so on and so forth. Uh, to get your volume, of course, you just take uh, final minus initial um, to get your volumes of any OH per or in my flask. Alright, for the second table, determination of the concentration of an unknown acid. Same thing, but you have the volume of unknown, which is going to be 10 milliliters for all four flasks. Flasks. Uh, same thing to find the volume. You take your final minus initial. Uh, discussion conclusion. Our first uh, question was to write the balanced equation uh, for the potassium hydrogen daily uh, with the NaOH solution. Um, then we were supposed to calculate the molarity of that solution and report the values. Uh, for all three trials in the table, or show the calculation and show the calculations. Uh, so here's our equation uh, as far as the sodium hydroxide um, with our KHC8 H4O4 um, to produce H2O, um, a sodium solution, and also um, dropping out our hydrogen because of the water, uh, we get KHC8 H4O4. Alright, uh, port average and standard deviation with standardization solutions concentration. Our average molarity was 0.103. And then the balance equation for the reaction of the acetic acid with our um, acetic acid unknown with our sodium hydroxide. And we're supposed to calculate the acid of the unknown. Um, so then you have the same exact equation as before, um, except for a different. Um, different acid, you have CH3, COOH, um, and then 
of course, one of your hydrogens drop off of the other side because of the H2O excess. Um, so you end up with CH3O uh, negative. Uh, the average and standard deviation for your unknown, our average molarity was 0.14. Um, now these were our interpretation of our results. Um, the question was if your Latin structure uh, gave you a sample of KHP um, that was determined to uh, standardize the NaOH, uh, how <coughs> would it affect the molarity calculated? Um, we said that this would cause the NaOH uh, to be higher than its real um, value because if you contaminate the KHB, um, it, it uh, takes more to standardize the NaOH solution. Um, so for that same amount of NaOH, you would have to actually use more KHB because it's an impure, impure solution. All right, next question is why do we use KHP to standardize uh, the NOH solution? Uh, we use that because pure KHP was used to standardize the NOH solution because it began to absorb moisture uh, when it was exposed to the air. This would cause the mass to be different uh, when we weighing it. And this would cause the solution to be more diluted with less NOH being used. Um, as far as the uh, sodium carbonate, um, we were then given that it was 0.151 grams uh, and required 25.42 uh, milliliters of hydrochloric acid to reach a set point. Um, what we had to do was you had to write the equation, of course, so you had the Na2CO3 solution um, plus 2 HCl, because um, of the balancing produces Na2Cl2, uh, CO2, and water. Um, after you go through the same uh, process of uh, mathematics, determine that the molarity of the hydrochloric acid solution is 0.1121.